welcome to Goldfish on Games and Cover Disc Face Off, the only show that's brave enough to pit the Amiga Magazine's discs against each other to see who had the best. And for September of 1993, we are looking at See You Amiga, Amiga Action, and The One for Amiga. Fight! We start with looking at Amiga Action, that in its best tradition has a disc full of productivity software and one full of games. The first program is Advantage, or The Advantage, as it likes to call itself. And this is a Lotus 123 or Excel clone, depending on where you were at the time. Now, unlike Excel speedrunners, I doubt I can make this too interesting. But we can take a quick look around to see what it has to offer. And anyone who's used a spreadsheet program in the past should be at home here. You can enter data, add formulas, and even plot some graphs. And looking at the options, it seems that you can even connect to a database, make macros, and there's quite a few advanced functions. So this looks very complete. But at the end of the day, it is a spreadsheet program. So if you're looking for that for your Amiga, then this looks like a great option. Otherwise, I don't know what else I can show you. The second program is actually a bit of PD, and it's vMorph, an image morphing application. It only supports low res 16 color images, but when they're in black and white, they don't look too bad. To set up the morph, you need to place points across the image, and the more you can put, the better the results will be. You can add more by right clicking along the top or the left hand edges, and then you just need to move them around so they hit some key points. Once you've done that, you can hit render and you just let it go. This will result in a series of images that you can play back in a program like dpaint or other animation package. So let's try a few out. So how about we morph me into something cooler? Yep, there's nothing cooler than rose tinted spectrum. Okay, let's try morphing me into the best cosplayer on YouTube. And, yep, it had to be the amazing Watto Snorkers. And for the last attempt, let's morph me into something more successful. Yep, that's Control Alt Reese. Moving to the next disc, we have a demo for Soccer Kids. And it's quite cool that they kept the title screen because it allows you to change your kit colours. In game, we find the level based on one of the much later worlds as it's using the California tile set from the USA setting. But what is really nice is that the layout seems to be brand new, as it doesn't match up with any that were in the final game. I do enjoy a demo that puts some effort into being custom. And if you've not played Soccer Kid or watched my review on it, then you play as the Soccer Kid, and you use your ball to do all sorts of tricks. This might be jumping off it to get higher, kicking it as a weapon, and there's all sorts of different trick shots and things that you can do with it as well. But possibly the one you'll need to remember is that you can hold down the fire button to get a new ball, as more often than not you'll get kicked off the screen and go somewhere else. The basic goal is quite simple, just make it to the end of the level. There's no enforced collecting or anything like that for you to do. But if you want, you can try and find all the football cards as a secondary goal. And some of them are actually quite hidden, so that will at least keep you coming back. As while this is a custom map, it's the only one here. So it's a fun, if slightly short, demo. Final game for CU Amiga is F117A Stealth Fighter, which was slightly renamed to Nighthawk F117A Stealth Fighter for its final release. And I think it's quite obvious that this is a flight sim game, which if you recall some of my previous episodes, I'm not all that great at. But after reading the magazine, I managed to get this fancy plane into the sky and moving around. Unfortunately, there's no sounds or music, and I don't think you want to hear me making plane sounds as it flies along. 
so instead it will just be quite silent. But I do have to say it really does fly when running on an Amiga 1200. It is really quite smooth here. And to try and show it off properly, I found that there's an autopilot, so it should fly to the right place. And while it's doing that, we can cycle through the various view modes, which makes this look far better than if I was actually flying it. There is just a single mission, but it does have multiple objectives, such as bombing a base and taking out some targets. But if you don't want to do that, then you can just fly around the map. So it does give you a reasonable idea of what the final game will be like. The last thing on this disc is Cyclone Rave, and this is a scene demo. And it's one that uses a lot of flashing images. In fact, it's 99% flashing images. So if you have an issue with that, and I do mean any issues at all, then please skip to the time that you can see on the screen. Or you can skip to the next chapter marker, as that will be at the start of the next magazine. Now there's not too much to say about this demo. As I've mentioned, it's mostly simple images flashing up with some music playing in the background. This is not a great example of this type of thing. And to be honest, I'm not entirely sure why CU Amiga would include it as I remember there being so much better scene demos at the time. And after that flashing nightmare, we have Amiga action. And after a few months of not too many games, this one has brought with it two discs with three commercial demos and two PD titles. And kicking it all off is the excellent Stardust. And after a very nice title screen, it's on to the map. Which shows that we have three levels that we can play. That you can technically play in any order. But there is a little issue with the demo that we'll come on to later. And you know what? I think I still prefer this map over the Super Stardust one. This first world will look very familiar to anyone that's watched my Super Stardust video or remember when we showed it off in a previous cover disc video, as Super was in many ways the AGA upgrade to this game. But that does mean the great gameplay is shared between them. And if you've not seen the game before, then this is a very fancy version of Asteroids, as you have different coloured and sized rocks that will move around that you have to shoot and they'll get progressively smaller and then eventually destroyed. And some of them will release icons that you can pick up as well. To help you with all this, you have a number of different weapons that you can use in the demo. Something that you'd have to work towards in the full game. And if a rock is getting too close, you can trigger your shield that will help you for a short amount of time. You can't really rely on your health as that will go down very quickly. One thing to keep in mind with this demo is there is actually a boss fight, but it will only trigger if you happen to play the bottom right hand corner as the last map. Do it in any other order and it won't show up. And if you manage to defeat the boss or just play them in the wrong order, then you'll get a warp icon on the map and that's it, unfortunately. It's a fun demo, but it's really just missing that amazing warp sequence that would have made it an amazing demo. Well, that and possibly a way to restart the game without having to restart your whole computer. The next demo is for a game that we've actually seen just recently, Universal Warrior. And if you've seen my Amiga Answers to Gauntlet video, then you'll know all about this game. And it's actually quite cool, as you have to control this little robot and get it around this maze. All while shooting at everything that moves, as well as a few things that don't. The demo has two levels. This one is one of the later ones in the game, so you can expect it to be a bit of a challenge. 
is first of all you have to try and solve this button maze, then you have to try and avoid the flying blocks that can do some real damage to your bot, and then to finally finish the level you'll need to find the goal token and then take it to the actual goal. And if you manage all this you'll get a little bit of music, yep, the same ones in the final release, and then you can go visit the repair center because you will have to fix up your bot after that last level. Now unfortunately most of the other options are disabled, so you can't buy upgrades, you can't bet on the maps, but for some reason you can go to the workshop, even if you can't actually add or change anything because you have nothing extra. But once you're finished with all this you can then go on to the second level which is a custom one just for the magazine, which again I do love seeing with these demos. And this one is a bit of a teleport maze and you'll also have to deal with bots that are directly attacking you as well. All in all it's a pretty decent demo that I think gives a really good idea of the final game. The second disc starts with Tensai, a title that had a lot to say before you could get into the game but mostly it's a bit of a hack and slash. And if this isn't ringing any bells, then there's a very good reason for that, as this is another unreleased game. The magazine gave this a tiny amount of text on how to play, saying that the controls were fairly intuitive. Well, I'm not 100% sure that's right as there are quite a lot of actions and moves that you can pull off, which will actually take a bit of experimentation to work out, and I'm still not sure I've worked all of them out because I don't know what there is. And this is mostly because it's a mix of pressing the button and a direction for some of them, or holding it down while pressing a direction, or just pressing a direction, as it wasn't until my third try that I worked out that pushing forward and down will make the hero run. And we seem to be running around some post-apocalyptic land, filled with animals and creatures and the odd electricity tower. Nice. It's all very moody with the sky changing colour, and this actually is part of the gameplay, as there's some beast that's meant to wake up when the night is over, and you have to try and get out before that happens. The rest of the animals though, they're not too difficult to take out, well once you get the timing down with both your weapons and their attacks. And there seems to be two levels to the demo, and both are pretty large and complex things, and expect to get lost stumbling around trying to find the right route, or at least I think I found the right route, as you'll come across a few mini bosses that you'll have to try and take down. There's lots of blind jumps for you to go for, and also annoying little jumps that you have to try and make. And then eventually you'll get to... an instant death. It's a shame that they never got to finish this, as they did promise quite a bit, and you could see that there was something here, even if I'm not a big fan of the hack and slash genre. The first PD game is Grav Attack which at first glance might look like a lander or thrust clone, but it does have a few ideas of its own. The first level is this simple multicoloured hillscape landscape, in which you are constantly fighting against gravity. The goal is to collect the bouncing things, which can be a lot easier said than done because how they bounce around and how you move, but thankfully the only deadly thing here is the terrain and it doesn't take much for it to destroy your craft. But once you've collected them all, you'll be off to the next level, which has the exact same physics, but you are now enclosed. And on top of all that, there's things shooting at you as well. But you aren't passive here, you do have a gun and you can shoot back. And that's if you can actually line your shots up that is. With it being enclosed on all sides, this is quite a bit harder than before, as you'll have to try and avoid every single surface, while trying to fly around some pretty thin gaps. 
but it seems that they weren't done adding twists to the game, as there's also a level where there is no gravity at all, so when you give some thrust, you'll continue to move in that direction. So you'll be constantly having to think about how to stop your craft, as well as trying to keep you going at the same time. It is actually quite a lot of fun. So all in all, this is actually quite a nice take on some classic game designs, and I actually had quite a lot of fun with it. The final PD game is Jump and Roll, which is a PD take on Trailblazer. You control this ball that is very nicely animated, which you'll use to roll and jump around this moving set of platforms. But you do have a limited number of jumps, so they should be considered more of a quick save than something that you'll be using all the time, as the colour squares will apply different effects to the ball, like the blue squares will launch you up into the air, so you don't have to jump, reds will slow you down, and others will stop you from being able to move side to side at all, and then you'll get those that will speed you up. So you will have to be on your toes constantly, as well as learning what all the different colours mean because holes will come up very quickly and if you fall down then you'll lose a chunk of time. Which isn't good as you only get a very, very limited amount of time to complete each of the stages. This game isn't messing around when it comes to its time limits. So far I've barely scraped it through when I've finished a level. Which annoyingly you can't really spot that you're about to finish at all because, well, there's nothing to indicate how far through the level you are, or where the exit is either. It is a decent take on this type of game, but I do wish they could have been a little bit more forgiving, as I found the fun annoyance balance a little bit off. This leads us on to the final magazine, The One for Amiga, that has two discs and a whopping five demos. The first disc gives us three options, but it's really just two games, as two of the options are for Bubba and Sticks, one for the one megabyte machines and one for the A1200. Which is interesting as the final game didn't get a special AGA version, so I was wondering what this might be for and I think it's really just a compatibility thing, as the one megabyte version crashes on an Amiga 1200, and the same the other way around. So I guess they were still having some issues trying to make a single version of the game, which is a little bit of a shame, as I was hoping there was something special here that we hadn't seen before. The demo itself is, well, it's just the first level of the game, but not even the whole first level of the game. As you can't get past that tree at the start, Normally you better jump and throw the stick behind it and then turn around so it bounces off the back of it to take it out, so you can then walk left. So there is a little bit missing here, or stuff that wasn't implemented yet in the game. If you've not played this before then, well my review of it would be a good place to start. How many times have I said that today? But basically put, this is a puzzle platformer in which you have to use sticks in various ways to get Bubba to the end of the map or in this case, get halfway along the map, as it will just end as you jump down this pit. It's a bit of a shame it's quite short, as they could have at least given you the whole of the first level, because this is a really good game. And well, the later levels are much, much larger, so they could have gotten away with showing off that first level, even if the whole game doesn't have all that many of them. And even if it isn't particularly long, it should give you a good idea of the humour as well as the gameplay that you can expect from the final release. The second demo is Overdrive. A top-down racing game from Team 17. There's a single map, but it is an 8 lap time trial, and they give you a bunch of times for you to try and beat. And I really didn't get all that close to the top of the list, though I did beat the musician. And this is mostly because the controls do take a bit of getting used to, as it's very easy to over as well as understeer, 
and hitting walls will really bounce you around, typically to point you in the wrong direction. And that makes it a bit of a pain to try and turn around to get going again. The track has lots of things for you to deal with, including bumps, jumps, bridges and hills, but also turbo pads, which most likely means a quick way into a wall for me. Now this isn't my type of game, but I did have a lot of fun with it. Starting the second disc and we find a game that we've already played, the Stealth Fighter demo. And nothing's really changed so let's move on to Suburban Commando. Actually, you know what, let's go back to that flight sim. I'm sure there's something I didn't do or mention in it and it's way more important. No, I need to cover this. Fine. Suburban Commando is a licensed game based on the Hulk Hogan film of the same name. And well, this is as good as you can expect from the film. It has twitchy movement and scrolling, and you only have a melee attack, that its range is less than my beard while moshing. I found the best way to actually take people down is to do a slide and tackle into them, but it is quite easy to either end up short or just going through them. You have to really time it well. The goal is to try and collect all the microchips in the level, which will require you falling down holes and having to find hidden paths, as well as needing to take down enemies to get a jetpack. And while the jetpack is actually quite cool, it doesn't really last long enough. So you'll have to then wait around for the baddie to return before you can kill him to get another jetpack. It's all a lot of waiting around, which is a bit annoying when you are quite heavily timed in this demo. On top of that, you can only have a single item active at once, so it's possible to get the jetpack icon, then have it vanish while you're waiting on another power-up to run out. This level is actually based on one of the later ones, and it seems to have been edited so you can't even get to half of it either, which means you can never really finish the game off. And um, well, I'm not sure you'll want to. So let's quickly move on to the final demo of the episode, Deep Core, a platform shooter style game where you have to move around this level, shooting at everything while collecting keys and other icons to try and open up doors. There's traps and nasties that will also try to block your way, so there is quite a bit going on. The map as well seems to be unique to the demo, as it doesn't look like any in the final game. And it's also got those little preview labels that hopefully gives it away. But seeing how large those levels in the final game are, this could actually be a small part of one of those. Because while this might not be a huge map, it is quite sizeable, and it gives you access to all sorts of weapons and upgrades for you to mess around with. So they really wanted you to find out exactly what you'd be doing in the game in the demo, which is quite cool. Now this is one of those games that I've been meaning to put some time into, but I've never really gotten around to it. And this demo shows that this does look like it could be a lot of fun even if the aiming is very limited. And there we have it! After a few months of some very slim pickings, we got some really good selections here, so let's rank them. And in last, I think it has to be CU Amiga. Those two demos were fun, as well as Vmorph, but the others were a little bit better. In second place, I've put The One for Amiga, as it was very close to being first, but Bubba only being half a level, and well, anything having to do with Suburban Commando cannot be first. So the top spot has to go to Amiga Action. It might have had an unreleased game, but it was a lot of fun, and those other demos and PD games were also quite good. And if you agree, disagree, or have anything else to say, well, you can let me know down in the comments. 
So until next time, I was the Goldfish, that marks a year of making cover disc face off, and this was Goldfish on Games. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed looking at my floppies, and if you did, you can find other episodes on the screen right now. Or you might want to use the buttons just below so you can find out when new episodes will be released. Or if you like to chat, well, you can join the Discord, I'll provide a link to it.